नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय reading from canto 10 chapter 1 canto 10 of shrimad bhagavatam chapter 1 entitled the advent of lord krishna introduction text number 13 in this purport shila prabhupad writes that the whole world is suffering from spiritual thirst we all know what it is like when we endure physical thirst of this body if you have not had food and you have not had water for days somehow you could live without food for a while but without water is very difficult those of you who have practiced nirjal ekadashi i think your experience is you hanker more for water than food When a person is in a desert under the hot sun no shade blazing sand days without water one would give anything for water If that person had crores of rupees in a bank account in bombay he would be happy to give all of it for a glass of water because the crores of rupees cannot save his life but that burning pang of thirst will be the very cause of his death in such a state one even seizes because one is longing for water so much one sees the mirage the illusion that water exists and with all one's strength one somehow or other runs to that place only to drink a handful of hot sand So yes we know the physical body when it is starving to death from water apply this same principle to the soul that is the condition the soul is thirsting for krishna and within this material world because people are so much lacking krishna consciousness the soul is starving starving for krishna we become discomforted when we do not have water for a day but the soul has been deprived of the water it desperately needs for millions of births and it's constantly trying to satisfy itself by running toward the mirages within the desert of material existence thinking it will find happy there in the mirage there is an illusory form of satisfaction to the body and maybe the mind but we are not this body we are not this mind we are the spirit soul it is the spirit soul that is identifying with the sufferings and the enjoyments 
that come upon us as in a dream. If you dream that you're starving or that you're falling from a high mountain, actually you're not. You're perfectly safe. But because you're identifying with that body that's falling from the mountain, you're suffering. The soul identifies itself with a suffering condition. Like a fish that has been swept up onto the sand. We're in an unnatural condition. We cannot be happy without Krishna. Because Jivera Swarupoy Krishna Ranitya Das. It is our nature to serve Krishna and to love Krishna. Without tasting Krishna's love and offering Krishna our love, the soul is starving of thirst. Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyuta nama dharmasya tadatma nam surajam yaham But Krishna is so kind. He descends again and again into this world to give his teachings, to perform his pastimes. Now we know that when the Lord appears as Matsyavatar, Varaha Dev, Kurma Dev, Narasimha Dev, Parasuram, Ramchandra, Balaram, Krishna, Buddha, Kalki. It is explained that the Lord appears like waves appear in the ocean. So many avatars of the Lord have appeared. Leela avatars, Guna avatars, Manam. Manvantars, Yuga avatars, Purusha avatars. Essentially, when the Lord descends, some people see him, some people observe his pastimes. But what he does and what he speaks is repeated by the great souls. Generation after generation after generation, the Lord's words and actions have been repeated by the great souls. And at the coming of Kali Yuga, when people cannot remember what they hear so much, the Lord descends again as Srila Vyasadev to compile the Vedic literatures. So it is in book form. The Smriti, the Shruti, the Shastra, In other words, the Lord comes to save us through Krishna Kata. Seeing us futilely chasing after the mirages to satisfy our thirst, the Lord comes with the real nectar. He speaks it, he acts it, and he gives people from all time in all places, the opportunity to hear it. Because Krishna is absolute. The sound of Krishna's teachings are not different than Krishna personally standing before you, teaching you. Hayagriva Prabhu told us the story when they were at this Dr. Mishra's yoga ashram. He was sleeping outside under the stars. It was a summer eat night. And he had a dream, and he told Prabhupada the dream. He said, I saw Krishna teaching Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, and then I saw you teaching Bhagavad Gita to me. And in the dream, it seemed like it was the same thing. And Srila Prabhupada said, yes, you have understood. This is parampara. 
Krishna is in your heart. If you open the pages of Bhagavad Gita, you should understand Krishna is speaking to you. And through the mercy of the great spiritual masters and their purports, the understanding is fully accessible to us. Shukadeva Goswami is speaking Srimad Bhagavatam. And the person who speaks the Bhagavatam sits on Vyasasan. That means it's the seat of Vyas, the guru of Shukadeva Goswami. And one is only entitled to sit on the seat of Vyas if one repeats through parampara the words of Vyas. It is Vyasdev speaking, Shukadeva Goswami speaking, all the Acharyas speaking, Krishna speaking. That is Krishna Kata. But what is the qualification of one who speaks and what is the qualification of one who hears? That is very important for the effect to actually have its real benefit. The Bhagavatam explains itself. The sages of Naima Sharanya tell what was the qualification of Sutta Goswami to speak. He was gentle. He was obedient to his authorities. He heard very carefully from Shukadev Goswami, his guru. And because he served his guru and the sages, with humble devotion and he was carrying their compassion to others by his good qualities. What he heard he is speaking in a spirit of servitude. One who speaks with that spirit can actually connect us to the mercy of the Guru Parampara. And the qualification of a hearer is like Parikshit Maharaj. We must be eager, eager to hear, eager to understand, eager to apply it to our life, eager to serve. Transcendental knowledge is like a seed. And our heart is like the field. Our service attitude makes the field fertile. If you put a good seed on a piece of rock, it will not grow well. If you put it on very hard, parched, dry land, it will really, really struggle to somehow or other grow very slowly, if at all. But if you put that same seed in soft, fertile soil, it takes root and grows prosperously. Tadvidi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadekshanti te jnanam jnani darshana the spiritual master should be self-realized. Repeating the words of the self-realized souls. And the disciple should be submissive. First one should surrender. One should surrender with simplicity and humility. That's the first qualification. Then inquire with a submissive heart and have a genuine eagerness to serve. That makes the heart soft, that attitude. Parikshit Maharaj was eager to hear the Bhagavatam. Yeyatamam prapadyante tamstadaiva bhajamyaham. 
Krishna reciprocates according to how we approach him. Krishna is not different than his message. If we approach the message falling asleep, then Krishna will make his message like a lullaby to put you to sleep. And that's all you get from it, sleep. Some benefit will be there, but minimal. If you want to hear the message because you just want to learn it intellectually so I could speak it and then people will honor me. You may get that. You'll get an intellectual memorization of the subject and then you'll be able to spellbound other people by speaking it. That's your motivation. But the message will not really take root in your heart very well. We have to have lobha. Lobha means greed, spiritual greed. Like a starving, thirsty person who needs water. That is why, unfortunately, it is often the case that to really listen carefully, we have to be suffering. When you're feeling real good, sometimes you read Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada's books, and yes, yes, this is very nice. It answers some of my questions. What's next? But when there's a real dilemma in your life, when there's a serious crisis, <sighs> Prabhupada, please speak to me. I, I, I need help. Then when you read, he speaks to you, and you find help every page, everywhere speaking right to you. He is speaking right to you. He's always speaking right to you. But we can only receive it, understand it properly when there's a desperate feeling of eagerness. Parikshit Maharaj was to die in seven days. And he understood that this message would determine the destiny of his soul. He was in rapt attention. And he was so grateful. So grateful that Shukadev Goswami and all the sages have come to bless him. Because of that eagerness to receive their blessings, he did not fatigue even though hunger and thirst were there. Srila Prabhupada explains he's a human. His body was obviously feeling hunger and thirst. But it didn't disturb him because he was so absorbed in tasting the sweet flow of the Ganges water of Krishna Kata. That sense of urgency, that sense of necessity. Thirst brings about a feeling of necessity. You can't really enjoy food unless there's a necessity. If you're not hungry, if there's a big, big Sunday feast, and then someone comes after you've stuff yourself beyond your limits and then someone comes and gives you your favorite preparation. Can you enjoy it? It makes you sick. The thought of eating it. But when you're hungry, even something that you ordinarily don't like so much, it tastes like nectar. Hunger must be there. Thirst must be there. It creates a necessity. Parikshit Maharaj is teaching us by his example how to overcome impediments within this material world. 
by being absorbed in Krishna. We can, we can cross beyond all impediments. We may physically overcome them or not, but we will transcend them. See, Krishna tells us in Gita, it's not a matter of success or failure or victory or defeat. It's a matter of transcending these dualities. Krishna tells Arjuna, try to win, but don't be attached to winning or losing. Just depend on me. Just fix your mind on me. Duryodhana was trying to win and Arjuna was trying to win. Duryodhana was a complete slave of the dualities and Arjuna transcended the dualities because he was absorbed in remembering Krishna. Manmanabhava madbhakto madhyajim nam namaskara. Krishna promises, you will attain me without fail if you just become absorbed in me. There's a verse in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita that one who remembers Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even the most difficult impediments and obstacles are easily overcome. But one who forgets Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even the easiest things become impossible. Now some of you rational, logical, realistic thinkers are saying, well, so many people who never think of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they're successful in so many ways, they're in overcoming so many impediments, how is that possible? And we see devotees sometimes so many problems. We're talking about actually overcoming obstacles. Overcoming obstacles means transcending the obstacles. It doesn't mean just head on on the physical mental platform being victorious. Arjuna was taught, even if you lose this battle, if you're absorbed in me, you are victorious. Hare Krishna. And if you win the battle and forget me, you lose. So yes, if we remember Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we can overcome all the obstacles that keep us away from Krishna. That's the real victory, to be reunited with Krishna. Yoga means to be reunited with Krishna. Whatever the situation may be, if we can simply remember Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, absorb, to the degree we're absorbed in him, to that degree we are victorious. We transcend all the obstacles on the path by the grace of the Lord. In order to be absorbed, we must feel the necessity to hear his glories, to remember him, the necessity to connect with him through chanting his holy names. Materialistic people, they may become very, they may win elections and become presidents or chief ministers or whatever. But spiritually, if they're not remembering the Lord, they've been completely defeated by the obstacles of prestige, of material conditioning and everything else. That's why devotees who really understand things a little deeply are never envious. Someone may have something much greater, but we understand that very attachment that they have, that very position they have is defeating them. Because it's keeping them bound to the repetition of birth and death because they're attached to it.
But if they're absorbed in Krishna, whether they're a chief minister, prime minister, president, CEO, or a simple brahmachari sweeping the floor, they've overcome all impediments. Because the only real impediment is the illusion that keeps us away from Krishna. The illusion that I am the enjoyer, I am the controller, and I am the proprietor. Srila Prabhupada is explaining that Krishna consciousness is a solution. And what is Krishna consciousness? To overcome all obstacles by being absorbed with Krishna. And how to be absorbed in Krishna? Krishna has arranged it so nicely through Krishna Kata, through hearing about Krishna. When we hear about Krishna, naturally we want to repeat the message, Sravanam Kirtanam. When we're hearing and we're repeating Smaranam, we're remembering naturally, we're absorbed. Such a simple, sublime process, even a child can perform it and become perfect. It only requires that we are sincere. Now Parikshit Maharaj, when he was cursed to die, he didn't just go into the forest alone to perform tapasya. He went where there was the best possible association. He, approached, he went to the bank of the Ganga and all the great sages and rishis came from all over the world and the universe. Parikshit Maharaj didn't say, leave me alone. He fell at all of their feet. Stay with me. Never leave me. Please enlighten me. And ultimately they decided Shukadeva Goswami on behalf of all the rest of them would enlighten him. The association of devotees who are eager to hear and chant the glories of the Lord will give us that eagerness. What and who we associate with determines very much our internal attitude. If we associate with people who very much are fond of gossip, prajalpa, criticizing others, then the weeds within our heart that are inclined toward those things will be fertilized and watered profusely, and those weeds will grow and increase our attitude toward those things. If we associate intimately with people, even devotees, who are very much compromising the pure principles of Krishna consciousness, the tapasya of accepting what's favorable for devotional service and rejecting what's unfavorable for devotional service. We will get strength by associating with people who are striving for that. And if we're with people who are not striving for that, it will weaken us. Association is so important. We have a necessity to become eager, intensely eager to hear and chant. So, so the association of devotees is the only means by which the development of eagerness to hear and chant will grow and be sustained. Therefore, Parikshit Maharaj, the last seven days of his life spent on the bank of Ganga with the great Vaishnavas. And you know, 
It wasn't only Parikshit Maharaj who was eagerly listening to Shukadeva Goswami. Everyone there was. There's no record that anyone got up to get food or drink. Maybe some people did. <laughs> but everyone was absorbed. And that collective energy was very much helping Parikshit Maharaj. Therefore, Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita, Machchita Madgata Prana Bodhyanta Paraspa Kathayantaschamam Nityam Tushyanti Charamanti Cha My devotees, they derive great satisfaction and bliss discussing amongst one another topics about me. Everyone is looking for bliss. They're going to the Bollywood cinemas, they're going to the permit rooms and the taverns, they're going to their offices, they're getting married and having children, everyone, whatever they're doing, they're looking for bliss. But my devotees, they come together to discuss topics about me, to chant and hear my glories. And that is where they find their bliss. This eagerness is so important. And there are unlimited examples. Srinivasacharya. He was born in that Chakandi and Jajigram area. He was living. His father, Chaitanya Das, from his earliest childhood, the father was telling him stories about Lord Chaitanya and his associates. Krishna Kata means hearing about Krishna and hearing about the devotees. Because the devotees surrender their lives to Krishna, hearing about a devotee is non different than hearing about Krishna. So Chaitanya Das was constantly immersed in telling his son about Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Gadadhar Pandit, about all the associates, especially Narahari Sarakar. Sri Raghunandan, Makunda Das. And little Srinivas was just born and raised. That's all he wanted to do is hear this subject from his father. He performed all his duties, but it just he was energized, energized by Krishna Kata. And then when he came of age. His longing was to meet Lord Chaitanya and the devotees. So the first opportunity possible, with the permission of his relatives, he walked the road to Jagannath Puri to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His heart was throbbing with anticipation of meeting the Lord, seeing the Lord, serving the Lord. After a whole life of hearing the glories, can you imagine his eagerness? He was in the outskirts of Puri. He saw some people coming the other way, lamenting. He said, well, he asked directions. I I'm going to Puri. Where will I find Lord Chaitanya? I said, do you know why we're lamenting? Lord Chaitanya has just ended his earthly pastimes and returned to the spiritual world. He's gone. Srinivasacharya was pulling his hair out, beating his chest. He fell unconscious. He decided, what is the use of my life? Everything I've always longed for is impossible to achieve now. I will enter fire. He was young. He was beautiful. He had a whole life ahead of him, if he wanted. 
but there was nothing else he wanted except to serve the Lord. He was actually ready to enter fire. That was his determination. Tritavrata. And Krishna reciprocates with our determination. While he was laying there unconscious, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally and directly appeared to him in a dream. In his beautiful golden form. Srinivasacharya in the dream, all his desires were fulfilled. He, he just placed his head and, and embraced the lotus feet of the Lord. The, lotus, the Lord placed his feet on Srinivasacharya's head. And the Lord said, I will go into Puri and study Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadadhar Pandit. And there you will find all your desires fulfilled. How eager he was to study Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadadhar. In Puri, he found Gadadhar in separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, I'm only living because the Lord has revealed to me that I'm supposed to teach you Srimad Bhagavatam. I'm simply sitting here waiting for you. But there's a problem. Every day, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and myself would read Srimad Bhagavatam for so many hours, and as we'd read, we'd cry in the ecstasy of love for Krishna. Look at the book. The words are all merged together due to our tears. It's impossible to teach you. Go to Sri Kanda, to Narahari Sarakar, and he will arrange another Srimad Bhagavatam to be made for you. Now in those days, Srimad Bhagavatams, you had to have someone scratch in palm leaves and then get dyes from the herbs of the ground to scrape over that scratching to make like an ink. All 18,000 verses. There were no printing presses. Now you go to any airport in America and people are trying to force you to take a Srimad Bhagavatam. In those days, you had to wait months to get a Srimad Bhagavatam handwritten. So he went all the way to Srikanda, got the Srimad Bhagavatam made, brought it back to Puri, eager, so eager to learn from Gadadhar Pandit the pleasure potency of Krishna, non different than Srimati Radharani. The essence and culmination of Srimad Bhagavatam is the love of Radha for Krishna. Gadadhar Pandit is Radharani. Who is a better teacher of Srimad Bhagavatam? And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself personally instructed him to do so. He was so eager. He came to the outskirts of Puri with his new, with his new Srimad Bhagavatam when he got the news. Gudadha Pandit couldn't wait any longer. In his separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, have return, he has returned to the spiritual world. Again he fell down. So, I will enter fire. beating his chest, beating his head against a stone in separation from this great personality. But then Gadadhar Pandit, the Lord reciprocates with our eagerness. And how the Lord reciprocates is beyond and transcendental to any of the limitations of this material existence. If the Lord wants to show his mercy on us, there is no geographical or time-framed impediments. He can appear in any way he pleases. He is a bigya and he is swarat. He's independent. He creates time. He creates the universal existence. If 
we're simply eager and sincere, the Lord will save us. The Lord will appear to us somehow or other. So Gadadhar Pandit appeared to him in a vision. Srinivasacharya is seeing him as weeping tears of ecstasy. Gadadhar Pandit put his feet on Srinivasa's head and blessed him and told him, eventually you should go to Vrindavan to see Rupa and Sanatan. They will teach you Srimad Bhagavatam, but first go to, Shri, go to Shri Khanda to see Hari, Narahari Sarakar. He will instruct you. He went to Sri Kanda. He stayed and was learning under Narahari Sarakar for some time. And he told him, you should go to Karadaha to study and take the blessings under Janava Devi, the eternal consort of Nityananda Prabhu. So he went to Karadaha. There he fell at the feet of Janava Devi, stayed with her for some time. She said, you should go to Vrindavan to meet Rupa and Sanatan and study Bhagavatam from them, but first go to Abhiram Thakur in, uh, in a village not far from here. He went there. Abhiram Thakur is Subal, most intimate cowherd boy, Gopa, in Krishna's Leela, who had descended in this form. He was willing and eager to give his blessings and teach Srinivas, but he wanted to test his service attitude. Because one is actually only receptive to Krishna's mercy to the degree we have a selfless, unconditional service attitude. John of Devi taught this principle that if we serve a Vaishnav with an expectation of something in return, we will not really get the blessing of that Vaishnav. We get the blessing when our service attitude is unconditional. We're doing it to please the Vaishnav. Krishna tells in the Adi Purana that worship of my devotee is more dear to me than worshiping me personally. There's nothing higher than Vaishnav Seva because it's the most direct and powerful means of winning Krishna's hearts. Sadhu nam hridayam mayam, sadhu nam hridayam tvaham. Krishna tells in the ninth canto that the sadhu, my devotee, has given his heart to me and I reciprocate accordingly. Therefore, I have given my heart to my devotee. My devotees are the proprietors of my heart. Lord Chaitanya said to Haridas Thakur, I am a prisoner in your heart. You have conquered me. So when we serve a devotee, we conquer Krishna. When you please the heart of a Vaishnava, you conquer Krishna because Krishna is within the heart of that Vaishnava and that's where he likes to be most. And that's where he is most munificent in extending his blessings from the inner heart of his devotee. Service attitude. Let me test him. So, Srinivasacharya came. Abhiram Thakur said, I'll give you some boga, go to the bank of the Ganga, cook it, eat it, and come back. He gave him just enough only for himself. 
Srinivasacharya goes to the bank of the Ganga, he collects some cow dung, he makes it into, he lights it in fire, makes a little stove out of, out of um, you know, some rocks, puts a pot on top of it, spends the afternoon cooking it, offering it. He hadn't eaten in days. He was actually starving. He traveled without eating for days. Then Abhiram calls some of his disciples, said, go over to Srinivasas, we're over the bank of the Ganga. You see that boy there? Go over and see if he offers you his food. And if he does, eat it, all of it. <laughs> so they go, and Srinivasacharya sees them and says, oh, please take prasad. They said, oh, very nice. We were hoping you would ask this question. After offering all the prasad, Srinivas serves it, they eat every morsel. And Srinivasacharya is in ecstasy. He's not hiding some. <laughs> he's, not, he's not saying, please leave some remnants for me. He just said, please eat to your full satisfaction. Well, what about you? You No, no, there's so much more, don't worry about it. Just take it, take it, take it. Ate everything. <laughs> 